Good morning. Welcome to Morning Expresso. You're watching Indian Express. I'm Charula Tapaswas. Let's begin with the big story of the day. The monsoon session of Parliament is expected to see the introduction of a new national public health bill that will replace the 125-year-old Epidemic Diseases Act 1897. The Indian Express has learned, apart from establishing a four-tier health administration system with well-defined powers and even defining a lockdown, the bill will also cover public health emergencies caused by bioterrorism, natural disasters, chemical and nuclear attacks or accidents. Here are the stories you'll find only in Indian Express. Poland had once closed its borders to block those escaping violence in Syria and Libya. But now with Russia invading a country Poland shares close ties with, it has responded with overwhelming warmth. Its capital Warsaw has become a transit hub from where refugees from Ukraine take trains and buses to other cities across the country and Europe. In this edition of the Idea Exchange event, Bajaj FinServe CMD Sanjeev Bajaj talks about the need for businesses to digitize and innovate. He even argues for the strengths of digital currency. Let's have a look at the front page. In what is probably a first, China has framed the Ukraine crisis in terms of NATO's eastward expansion and juxtaposed it to US strategy in the Indo-Pacific, including the Quad, of which India is a part. The Ukraine crisis provides a mirror for us to observe the situation in the Asia-Pacific. We cannot but ask how can we prevent a crisis like this from happening in the Asia-Pacific, Chinese Vice Foreign Minister Lei Yucheng said. Amid the pandemic and a delayed retreat of the monsoons, the annual highways construction target of 12,000 kilometers for this fiscal is unlikely to be met, with the numbers set to less than that of 2020-21. Current estimates are that this financial year is likely to end with around 10,500 km of highways translating to around 28 km per day. Here are the must reads. Ending speculation about the race for the top job in Manipur, the BJP central leadership on Sunday announced that N. Biren Singh would remain the Chief Minister of the Northeastern State. An official from the Chief Minister's office said the oath taking ceremony would be held on Monday. However, uncertainty persists in Uttarakhand and Goa, where the party is supposed to take a call today. A quarter of a century after he parted ways with Lalu Prasad, veteran socialist leader Shant Yadav merged Lok Tantric Janta Dal, a party he had floated in 2018 with the Rashtriya Janta Dal, headed by the former Bihar CM, who is behind bars in connection with a corruption case. From the stage, the leaders promised a stronger socialist front, resolved to oust the communal forces and deplored the politics of compromise. The Rashtri Swayam Sevak Sangh is working on plans to counter the growing influence of the Popular Front of India in certain university campuses and elsewhere it is learnt. These plans include expanding the base of the Akhil Bharatiya Vidyarthi Parishad in southern India and reaching out to sections within the Muslim community not aligned with the PFI. The Sangh believes that the student wing of Popular Front of India, the Campus Front of India, was instrumental in galvanizing minority students on the hijab controversy in Karnataka and was successful in making it a national issue. The mega plans of over 50 companies to raise more than 77,000 crore rupees through initial public offerings seem to have been put on the back burner for now following the market volatility and exit of foreign portfolio investors in the wake of the Russian war on Ukraine. This is besides the LIC IPO through which the government plans to raise around 60,000 crore rupees. Vimal Kumar remembers an eight-year-old prankster's face that could plunge into a puddle of tears when he was caught mid-prank. Lakshya Sen could also cutely pull a frowning face and pretend as if he had nothing to do with whatever unsavory business had gone on. Watching Sen at the All England this week, all these years later, Vimal is still boggled about how liquid steel starting coursing through Sen's beans these last six months. Coach Vimal Kumar reveals how the once home sick All England Open finalist has evolved into a steely thinking shuttler. In today's Delhi Confidential, ruts have always been part of the political playbook for a long time. 
but Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla has found another way of using them. Birla will flag off Prasadam Rats from his official residence today. These specially designed vehicles have facilities for cooking food. They will provide hot food to the attendants of patients in six hospitals, including Ram Manohar Loya Hospital, Sapdarjan Hospital, Lady Harding Hospital in Delhi. And finally, in this episode of the Three Things Podcast, Shubhajit Roy joins the show to discuss the significance of Japanese PM Fumio Kishida's visit to India and what it means for bilateral relations between the two countries. Next, Krishan Kaushik talks about a fact-finding committee's report on press freedom in Kashmir. And finally, we go over Vice President Venkaya Naidu's speech on the saffronization of education in India. That's a news wrap for my end. For the latest updates, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, The Indian Express. Thank you for watching.